Hey, my dear Brightsiders, I've got a nice riddle challenge for you. I know you've been waiting. Set everything you've been doing aside. Yeah. Your detective skills are needed. Long ago, an evil witch kidnapped three married women and turned them into rose bushes. One of the women, who had children, begged the witch to let her see her family, and the witch agreed. She took the woman to her home for one night and turned her back into a rose bush the next morning. The witch had no idea the woman's husband had followed her back because he wanted to save his wife. He looked at three identical rose bushes and suddenly realized which one was his wife. How? The rose bush his wife had been turned into didn't have any night dew on the leaves. A woman called the police to report that her grandmother's ring had been stolen. When a detective came to her house, she saw shards of broken glass on the ground and dirty footprints. But instead of looking for the thief, she arrested the woman who had made the call. Why? If someone had indeed broken into the house, the shards of glass would have been inside the house not outside. As for the window, it was broken from the inside, most likely to stage the robbery. A man called his wife from the office and said he would be home by 8. He arrived home at 2 minutes past 8, but his wife was very angry because of his late arrival. Why? The wife thought the man would be home by 8 p.m., but he came home at 8.02 a.m. A small shop in New York is called Seven Bells, but there are eight bells hanging outside. The store owner can easily correct this mistake, but chooses not to. Why? Initially, this was indeed just a mistake. But over time, the store owner noticed that people often came inside to point out the inconsistency, and this started to increase his sales. A queen had a bowl of golden apples, which were her most treasured possession. One day, one of the apples went missing. Oh no! She gathered all the members of the court in the throne room and told them she knew how to find the thief. Each of them had to touch a rusty pot with a rooster inside while the lights were off. The rooster would crow when the criminal touched the pot. Strangely, the rooster didn't crow throughout the whole procedure. Despite this, the queen knew who had stolen the apple. How did she figure it out? By touching the pot, the members of the court ended up with rust on their hands. But the thief was too scared to touch the pot in case the rooster crowed, so they didn't have any rust on their hands. A rich man named James Leonard was attacked in his house on a Sunday afternoon. These people were in the house at that time. The maid, the cook, the butler, the gardener, and James's wife. They gave the following statements. The maid said, I was laying the table. The cook told the police, I was cooking breakfast. The butler said, I was polishing silverware and dishes. The gardener added, I was planting tomato seeds. And the wife said, I was reading a book. So. Who attacked Mr. Leonard? It was the cook. You don't cook breakfast in the afternoon? Dennis is a talented architect. He's designed a unique skyscraper, and the construction works were about to start. His boss asked the guy to show around a group of specialists from a competitor company. The only condition was that they weren't allowed to take any photos. Dennis did as he was told, but when the group was going to leave, he asked the security to detain one man. The architect claimed he had been taking photos during the tour around the site. How did he understand it? The man was carrying an umbrella. He kept pointing it at different objects asking lots of questions, but the sky was cloudless. What did he need the umbrella for? A camera must be hidden there. Two men are going to fill their watering cans with water from the river. 
Who will bring more water? The spout of the older man's watering can is situated lower than the spout of the other man's can, and the level of water can't be higher than the spout. It means the younger man will bring more water. Mrs. Smith claims that her neighbor, Mrs. Miller, has stolen her laundry. The woman says she hung the laundry in her backyard at 10 a.m., and when she went out of the house two hours later, she saw Mrs. Miller putting it in her bag. I didn't do this, it's a lie, the other woman replied angrily. The detective investigating this case asks Mrs. Smith to go to the police station for trying to slander her neighbor. How has he figured out that Mrs. Smith is lying? It's freezing outside and there's snow on the roofs. In two hours, damp laundry would be so frozen it'd be impossible to fold it and put it in a bag. Look at this group of people and try to figure out who the man's wife is. It's the woman in purple. Both she and the biker are wearing matching wedding rings. Detective Morris decided to have a meal at a cafe, but as he came closer, he saw a crying lady. I was going to cross the road when some woman grabbed my purse and disappeared. I noticed her entering this cafe. Can you help me get my things back? The detective entered the cafe. Ah, that's my purse, right between those two women, but I can't recognize the one who took it. I didn't have enough time to look at her attentively. Morris didn't need much time to figure out which woman was guilty. It's the one on the right. The woman on the left has her left arm in a cast. If she had taken the purse, she'd have put it on the right side of herself. Joan took part in an experiment testing her logical thinking and analytical skills. The girl was locked in a small room. The door was supposed to open automatically once she figured out the riddle written on a piece of paper. Which principle is this sequence based on? 8549176320. The numbers are lined up based on the alphabetical order of the first and second letters of their names. Eight, five, four, nine, and so on. Hannah called her friend, Detective Evelyn Marks, and asked her to come as soon as possible. While the woman was away walking with her dog, someone got into her house and stole her laptop. Hannah was sure it was her neighbor, Jeremy. Evelyn went to question the man, but he wasn't at home. She decided to wait for him in her car since it was raining. Soon, she saw Jeremy opening his entrance door. I went fishing early in the morning. Don't you see that I've just come back? But the detective didn't believe Jeremy and took him to the police station. Why? The guy is wearing white sneakers. But it's been raining since early morning. If he was out fishing, how can his shoes look so clean? Detective Taylor was chasing a dangerous criminal. Suddenly, the man entered a hospital, but there must be hundreds of rooms there. Luckily, it was raining, and the criminal left footprints on the floor. The detective followed them and got into a small room. There were three people there. All of them were covered in bandages from head to toe. But one of them was a fake patient. Who? It's the man in the middle. He doesn't have a medical chart next to his bed. Look at these pretty fish. One of them is different from the rest. Which one is it? This one in the middle. Its eyes are slightly bigger than those of the others. On a cold winter day, a man was standing in front of someone's house. He didn't move or say anything until the spring, and the owner didn't mind. Who was this man?
It was a snowman. During one of his experiments, a crazy scientist gives a group of people two pills, one safe and one poisoned, with some water to wash it down. They can choose one of the pills, so their chances are 50-50. Strangely, all people get poisoned and have to be rushed to a hospital. Can they all be so unlucky? All the pills were okay. The poison was in the water. The following riddles will put your attention and quick thinking to the test. Look at this rebus riddle. Mill and lion. Can you figure out what it means? It's one in a million. Now we've got this image. It's filled with room, room, room. Can you find the odd word? Yep, there's a boom among all those rooms. James is carrying a barrel that weighs 60 pounds. What can the guy add to it to make it weigh 40 pounds? All James needs to add is a hole. Find the number that doesn't belong here. Right you are. 280 is different from all these 208s. Can you figure out what's wrong in this picture? Roses don't grow on the seafloor. The same picture, but the mistake is different this time. Spiders don't live underwater. But then, where did this spider web come from? How can you pop a balloon with a knife without it bursting or losing air in the process? Deflate the balloon first. Only after that, stick the knife through it. How can you take one from 19 and get 20? You can easily do it if you use Roman numerals. See for yourself. Tornteen, minus I equal sign X sec. Adam added 6 to 11 and got 5. And it was the correct answer. How is it possible? It's correct if we talk about time. It's 11 a.m. If you add 6 hours, it'll be 5 p.m. It took a witch eight years to finish digging the deepest well in the world. Every next year, she managed to double its depth. How many years did it take the well to reach half of its maximum depth? Seven years. If the witch doubled the well's depth every year, it had to be half its final depth the year before it was completed. You need to get into your rival's computer, but it's password protected. The only hint you have is a note you found hidden under the keyboard. One mouse, three books, two boards, one night, four balls, two lighters, one girl, one hall, three watches. Can you figure out what the password is? It's moonlight. The number in front of each word refers to the corresponding letter of this word. A treasure hunter finds a chest filled with gold and jewelry in a cave on a distant island. There are three keys next to the chest. Red, blue, and gold. Only okay. one of them can open the chest, and the treasure hunter has only one attempt to choose the right key. On the wall, he sees a bizarre inscription. TGK, Ho, Ely, Den. Can it help him pick the correct key? The man should choose the gold key. 
if he rearranges the letters in the inscription, he'll get the golden key. Three men were swimming in the sea. The weather was getting worse, and a coast guard asked them to leave the water. But when they got back to the shore, only two of the men had wet hair. Why? The third man was bald. Are you ready to challenge your intelligence? You can crack these cool puzzles on your own and then surprise your friends at the table. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time to think. All right, we've arranged these six coins specially for you. Can you turn this shape into a hexagon in just three moves? Wait a minute. There's a catch. You can only slide a coin and put it in a place where it touches two others. And it shouldn't disturb other coins while moving. Good luck. Well, have you cracked it? Here's the right answer. Move one, two, and three. Voila! Our perfect hexagon is ready. You can also use this riddle in reverse to challenge your friends. Here's another riddle with a hexagon shape. The task is to arrange these coins into a triangle with only four moves. The rules are the same. Every move should consist of sliding just one coin to a new location, where it touches at least two other coins. Are you ready? Let's get started. Here's the correct solution. And now the challenge is to make a cross with five coins going vertically and five horizontally. But you can only move two coins. Sounds impossible, but there's actually a way out. Good luck! You probably think that the number of coins is not enough to complete this task. But if we put a stack of three coins in the center, it becomes quite possible. Magic! The next puzzle will also check your ability to think outside the box. Eight coins are arranged in an H shape. The challenge is to move just four coins to create an O shape. Each of the four coins must always be touching two others in the shape, and no gaps are allowed. All right, let's see the answer. One, two, three, and four. It's a lot easier than it seems. It took 10 coins to build this triangle. Can you flip it upside down by moving only three coins? First of all, grab this top coin and move it all the way down here. And now just level up these two coins. And voila, the triangle is flipped. Here comes the next puzzle. This square shape consists of nine coins. The challenge is to turn the square into a triangle shape by moving only two coins. You can move them anywhere, but you have to use all nine coins in the final shape. Can you solve it? Ready to see the answer? Just move these two coins, and there you have it. Feeling dizzy already, but there's actually an alternative answer to this puzzle. Want to try? Let's put the coins back in the initial position and think again. Here's the second solution. The next task is to move just one coin and make two lines. Each line should consist of four coins. Can you do it? This puzzle requires unconventional thinking, but the answer is simple. You should only put this coin over here and there you have it. Let's go ahead and try to crack the next puzzle. The task is to move just three coins to reverse the entire shape. Can you do it? Yeah. 
Ready to see the solution? Step 1. Move this coin over here. Step 2. This one goes here. And finally, step 3. Our next puzzle will require some additional props for matchsticks. And now let's go ahead and place the coin outside by moving no more than two matchsticks. But be careful, you must create the same shape that you started with. Only this time, the coin should be outside of the parallel matchsticks. Try to explore beyond your expectations if you want to solve this mystery. And good luck! Well, how's it going? Here's the solution. Slide this matchstick like this and put this one over here. A billionaire wants to expand a swimming pool in his garden and asks for your help. But there are four old oaks nearby and you cannot remove them. Can you add four matchsticks and rearrange the entire shape to create a new square swimming pool? Here's the solution. Easier than it sounds, huh? Let's go ahead and take a look at the next riddle. Here's a square. Each side is built of four matchsticks. The challenge is to add 10 matchsticks and split the initial square into four areas with the same size and shape. How's it going? Have you cracked it? Here's the correct answer. These matches are arranged into the shape of a David star. The task is to add 12 matchsticks and create 9 rhombuses. Can you do that? Here's the complete solution. Let's take a look at the next puzzle. Here's a square. Can you move just one matchstick to create 6 squares? Voila, one, two, three, four, five, and six. There are 10 matchsticks placed in two directions, six placed vertically and five horizontally. The challenge is to move one matchstick so that there are six matchsticks in both directions. Ready to see the answer? Just put this matchstick over here. You don't have to be a great mathematician to solve the next riddle, but it can make your brain sweat. 2 plus 7 minus 2 plus 7 equals 14. Can you move just one matchstick and change the final result to 30? Voila! There are seven matchsticks on the table. The task is to arrange them so that each touches the others. Can you do that? Nobody said that all matchsticks have to be flat on the surface. So this is what the correct solution looks like from the top. You should put the seventh matchstick vertically at the center. The next puzzle is harder than it looks. There are three silver coins and two gold coins on the table. They're set up one by one. And the challenge is to rearrange them into the following position to separate gold from silver in just five moves. But there's a catch. You can only move a pair of gold and silver coins together. They have to touch each other. For example, this move is okay, but you cannot make it this way. Ready to try? Remember, five moves only. You can pause the video if you need additional time to think. Let's begin. Ready to see the solution? Step one, move this pair over here. And now steps two, three, four, and five. And now please welcome our next riddle. You're gonna need five matchsticks and one coin to show it to your friends. The task is simple. Make the coin get inside the house, but you can only move three sticks and you can't touch the coin. Let's begin.
Ready to see the solution? Step 1. Move the bottom stick in an upward direction like this. Step 2. Move one of the walls like this. And step 3. Move the bottom stick in an upward direction as shown. And there you have it. Great job! The next puzzle will require 24 match heads. They're arranged in the number 58. The challenge is to remove some match heads and create a number that is less than the original 58 by at least 50. Can you figure out the minimum number of match heads that should be removed? To solve this mystery, you need to take away at least two match heads. This way, you'll get the number 5.9, which matches the task perfectly. Next one. Here's a shape that you need to transform. The challenge is to remove only two matchsticks to get eight triangles. Can you do that? Here's the solution. Ready for the next puzzle? This equation contains an obvious mistake. 77 minus 77 is not equal to 77, but you have a chance to fix it by moving two matchsticks. Can you make it correct? Here's the solution. The next challenge is to play six matchsticks to divide the square into four pieces of equal area and the same shape with one coin inside each piece. Let's add some grid lines to make the task a little easier. Ready to see the solution? Here we go. With four matchsticks, you can easily divide the square into four similar pieces but you're given six matchsticks and the task was to separate all coins. That's why you should use more sophisticated shapes and place the matchsticks like this. And we get four similar pieces with one coin in each. Let's go ahead and crack some geometric puzzles. How many triangles do you see in the picture puzzle below? The correct answer is 20. What about this picture? Can you count the correct number of triangles? There are 26 triangles in this image. The next puzzle will take some time and patience. Can you count all the triangles in the snowflake picture? The correct answer is 56. I have a head and a tail that will never meet. Having too many of me is always a treat. What am I? The correct answer is a coin. Which fruit is also a bird and a person? Kiwi. It's a burden of fruit. Also, kiwi is a common self-reference used by New Zealanders. I help you from your head to your toe. The more I work, the smaller I grow. What am I? I'm a bar of soap. I can fly but have no wings. I can cry but I have no eyes. Wherever I go, darkness follows me. What am I? The correct answer is louds. I have branches but no fruit, trunk or leaves. What am I? I'm a bank. 
I have many teeth, but I can't bite. I'm often used early, but rarely at night. What am I? The correct answer is a comb. Whenever you see me, you clap for me. Though you hate me, you prefer me to my wife. Who am I? I'm a mosquito. I'm a word of five letters. My first two letters indicate who I am. My first three letters are used to cure disease. My last three reverse letters indicate a young guy. My fourth, third, and second letters in order are a fruit drink. If you manage to get me, you must be proud. Who am I? I'm a metal. Two in the bedroom, one in the house, but none in the kitchen. What am I? The correct answer is the letter O. Let's say you're a math teacher. And your student tells you that removing one from 11 makes it 10, and removing one from 9 makes it 10. Is your student wrong? Not really. This answer is possible when you use Roman numerals. 9 equals sine 9, 10 equals sine x, 11 equals sine tub or twice. This way, by removing one from 9, you're getting 10. And by removing one from 11, the result is 10 again. It's a common fact that New Year occurs a week after Christmas, and therefore it falls on the same day of the week as Christmas. But this won't happen in 2050. In 2050, Christmas will occur on Sunday, while New Year will fall on Saturday. How can this be possible? To solve this mystery, we should read the question very carefully. New Year does fall after Christmas. But that happens in two different years. The question is put up against the year 2050. So there will be 51 weeks and two days in between them, as New Year will appear on January 1st, 2050, and Christmas will happen on December 25th, 2050. Take a look at this picture. Can you figure out what's wrong here? It's all about time. According to the clock, sunset can't take place at this hour. What about this image? Can you spot anything odd? Min and Max are on the wrong sides. Let's go ahead and take a look at this bus stop. Can you find any weird details? This bus doesn't have any side mirrors or windshield wipers. 